Hey guys, and welcome to the Igloo. Today we're going to be covering about something a little bit different, uh, kind of into the field that I'm going for in my school, and that is like AI and AI temporal loading and everything else. So let's get right into it. Recently, the 2080 and 2080 Ti released DLSS, something that is neural networking when it comes to your anti-aliasing process. And that process is actually known as NGX technology. Now, they have something already available. I don't think it's available to the public because it is a driver-related issue when it comes to NVIDIA through an SDK if you want to manipulate that as well. But here's what it does. What it does is that it pulls together data that is from a scene or a video game or something of the sort, a map, um, a certain area where you really want to hit on, and it analyzes and it makes the best version using AI post-processing so that it could actually make a more efficient rendering of the process using a card with either tensor cores or just brute force CUDA. Now, I don't think they're going to release it to brute force CUDA, but it's probably going to mainly predominantly stay on the tensor cores that are on the 2080 and 2080 Ti and how it's processed. Now, there's a couple other things that are in NGX technology, oh, which is slow-mo applications, AI in-painting, as well as AI up-resolution scaling, and a few other things that are also added with DLSS because it is neural networking built into your drivers on NVIDIA. As you have right now, the most current drivers have DLSS enabled onto it, but they are only for the cars that have TensorFlow operations. Games that offer this kind of stuff, like Arc, um, Final Fantasy 15 and a few other ones that might be coming out in the future, but they're not currently doing it right now because they need to generate the environment to have a more stable platform. So if you want to have DLSS enabled, you have to have the whole game scanned so that it can be having proper DLSS on all of the game instead of just one or two or three different portions Whereas they can actually, if they're looking at the full data cluster and they're analyzing public data or they're analyzing private data. Now, if they're analyzing public data, that means the game has already been in progress and they're using public data from actual client characters so that they can actually send this data to a data center to process this versus if they're just generating the environments and making a benchmark kind of like on how Rainbow Six Siege has a in-game benchmark so that it can use uh, anti-aliasing neural networking NGX in order to actually process the scene more efficiently of their AI anti-aliasing but AI AIAA doesn't sound as good as DLSS so Going into it, there's also other games that could severely benefit from this as well. Now, one of these EA games that is also an indie game, which I've been currently covering, which is Scum, is going to be offering this type of technology. But again, we don't know where they're getting their data, whether it's from the clients or it's from the public uh, way of doing it. Where... Again, it ties into where these companies are collecting the data because most of them are under NDA with this technology because it's so breaking edge. It literally just got announced like a few months ago for most of the, uh, the people that were doing it. But again, it's using this current step to improve your AI as well as your DLSS. That's on those current cards. Getting more into it. When you're using these tensor core operations versus you're using the raw CUDA that's available onto your cards, there's going to be a little bit of understanding between the two because mainly CUDA renders 3D games to put it onto a 2D space in the simplest terms that you can do. Ray tracing 
is going to be adding different lighting effects within a three-dimensional plane to a 2D space so that you have more realistic images. And then you have DLSS, which is available to add anti-aliasing to a higher degree using machine learning. But it's machine learning onto their data centers versus the actual tensor cores that are available. Now, do they use actual tensor cores versus the rest of it? We don't know yet. We don't know if they just use raw CUDA and then they just kind of translate it or do like one and a half rendering of how DLS is. But we don't know the exact process because not everybody that has been benchmarking this has had any type of games that enable DLSS and there's no like hardware oversight look of like how this is being used, how is this being used, how is this being used and it's not overall the full plane of using the card. They just see raw CUDA and their benchmarks. So again, I want to be recommending buying this until all of the technology is displayed across newer games. But older games, I mean, you're still going to benefit from it. But it's something where you're pretty much having a price premium for you being an early adopter by being a thousand, thousand one hundred, a thousand two hundred, depending on if you have an overclocked bin card on top of everything else. So again. This is a very, very new technology, and a lot of game devs don't really get on how the neural networking is going to affect their game. All they're doing is that they're working with NVIDIA, and they're supplying some technology because they want to push the actual DLSS, ray tracing, and a few other things. But it's a very early early version of this and in order to take full advantage of this you would probably need about double to triple the tensor cores and if they're going to be adding RT cores that are specifically only for ray tracing they're going to need a lot more than that because most of this has been very unoptimized because you're getting 1080p like 30 to 60 FPS depending on the game title with yeah, just that, which here. could be like the other hair works that you'd be seeing. But honestly, again, most people can't see this, but as a neural networking point, this is what I can tell you, that they pull all this data together. Once they have the data analyzed or the scene analyzed, because again, this is mainly a graphics card iteration of this. As I said, as the example of AI in painting, AI slow-mo, and then there's AI upres. Mainly, this is mainly GPU based, but it can be translated to actually using it as a post-processing render analyst, as well as it could actually use the same processes that the CPU does with tensor cores because it has the computation for it, but it's not transpired over it rather than using just the regular process on how the architecture is laid out but that's a whole nother subject of like rewiring and redoing complete motherboards from the ground up versus just having something like this where it offers better anti-aliasing for some games even though we don't see them right now but again they didn't announce this because people are not going to understand why they don't have this product enabled in the first place. You need to pull that data together. Then you need to have the machine do training with that data. And then with the training, whether it's just pure neural networking or it's parent-child al algorithms, you're going to need to see the difference between this in order to actually process everything through. And once it's so trained properly, to have the right correlation of data to send it to the game dev so that they can insert that version of DLSS to the most efficient that they can possibly get. And if you guys like this kind of stuff and this kind of talk, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I also have a Patreon where I'm using this as well, and have a good one, guys.